We now welcome UFC featherweight Billy Quarantillo. Billy, thank you for the time, sir. No problem, guys. Thanks for having me. We will take the first set of questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Hey, Billy. Happy belated birthday. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. So, obviously, you're right close to the fight. Were you able to celebrate, or are you just saving it up so you could go big after? Uh, yeah, no, I wasn't able to celebrate yet. Uh, my birthday was, what, yesterday? It was, hey, Wednesday? Oh, yeah, so, yeah, my birthday was on Tuesday, so I was actually uh, quarantined uh, by myself in my hotel room, so waiting for the COVID results. So I'm going to wait to celebrate, you know, Saturday night or Sunday when I get back home with my fiance. This fight was one of those scrapped early on in the pandemic. You guys have both fought other people since then. So what was it like to kind of come all the way back around to the matchup? Yeah, it, um, yeah, you know, so um, for those who don't know, we were supposed to fight in April. And that was right when, you know, COVID and the pandemic started. So we already did a you know a couple weeks training camp like probably like a month training camp getting ready for Gavin, uh, and, and we loved the matchup back then. And now I think with I got a lot more experience, I got a lot more cage time, uh, especially at the apex. I was able to go out there and get two big wins uh, in between. I think it just adds a, a lot more stakes to the you know what could happen in this fight. You know the value of the fight. It's on a big pay per view now too. So I was excited then, uh, and I'm even more excited now. In terms of uh, the strategy and working with your coaches, is it just like, hey, we're going to pick up where we left off around April? Or do you feel like you guys even found even more new stuff having seen more of his fights this year? Yeah, uh, without giving too much away, we definitely see a lot of areas where I feel like I could beat him in. And, you know, just knowing that I was already going to fight him and, and, you know, to get booked with him again, I think it took a lot of, like, the nerves away. You know, like, when I first get someone's name – and you're starting to game plan for them. You start getting those nerves and like, you gotta start looking them up. But I feel like we already knew what Gavin brings to the table. You know, he's a vet, He's he does a lot of things well. Uh, there's definitely a little bit of hole, there's some holes in his games that I plan on uh, exploiting. And so, yeah, we kind of just left off where we started, but we, we have a lot more, uh, a lot more going into this one, uh, this time around. This would obviously cap off a solid uh, year for you in terms of inside the cage. What would you be, well, if you get the win, what would you like in 2021 next for you? Yeah, I definitely think uh, this this was a huge year for me. If I'm able to go 4-0 in, in 12 months, you know, my, my UFC debut was December 7th last year. So to go 4-0 in my first year, it, it would just be, you know, a dream come true, really, to, to start my career off this way. And I, I'm definitely looking at that top 15. I'm either, I think either after a win over Gavin Tucker it would be a top 15 or definitely a big name and a big card. So I don't want to overlook anyone, but that's definitely what I'm looking for you know, looking forward to past this. Hey, thank you, Billy. Good luck. No problem. Thank you. We will take the next set of questions from Jim Barcelona with the Miami Herald. Miami Herald. Thank you. I'm just curious, how did this training go for you? Who helped you train for this fight? And were you in Tampa training? Where did you train? Yeah, I was in Tampa. I trained in uh, Gracie, Tampa South, where I've done all my training camps. This is my, you know, 32nd fight out of there in, in Tampa. So it, it was it was the same old crew, man. It was my head coach, Matt Arroyo, my striking coach, Dan Rawlings, uh, one of my main teammates, Matt Frivola, who's got a huge fight coming up uh, January 23rd, which I'm going to go and head out there for, for that. And uh, just the same old crew, my brother Jim, who's always with me uh, during fight week. And it's just, it seems like it's just, this year just been a long, continuous training camp. Uh, I'm excited to get this fight over with and, and take a, a few weeks off uh, because it's been a super busy year. But yeah, it's the same old crew and, and Tampa and Florida is my home. So Miami Herald, what's up, man? Miami Herald, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. So it's been such an interesting 2020. Does that prepare you for whatever 2021 is ahead for you because not just fighting but just training and preparing it's just been such a crazy 2020 mm -hmm. with covid yeah i think so and, yeah. and I, I've, I've said it since the spike carlisle fight that i can't wait to fight uh in front of fans again you know i miss the fans you know my ufc debut in dc it was just incredible fighting in front of i think it was like 10 or twelve thousand fans um so yeah if you know if i have to keep fighting the apex that's fine this will be my fourth fight there uh, in about a year and a half since my contender series. So I'm, I'm very comfortable now here, 
but I would still love to, to, to obviously have everyone, everyone back, which of course everyone wants to. And, uh, as, as safely as possible, I can't wait for the fans, but yeah, it, I can't imagine 21 being more difficult than this, you know, being locked in the hotel, having to do COVID tests all the time, all the time. You mentioned you're going to take some time off and what is that going to be like? Because you've been go, go, go for a while. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of looking at this as, this has been like my regular season, you know, trying to go four and zero, And then once I'm able to get to that four and zero, I plan on taking a few weeks off. I'm going to corner my teammate, Matt Favola in Abu Dhabi for fight week uh, out there. So I plan on going out there and just kind of helping him get ready. And then after that, I'm looking at like, like it was like a regular season to like a playoff run where I'm going to start fighting guys in the top 15, big names, big pay-per-view events. That's, that's kind of what I'm looking forward to after that. Um, and, and right after this fight, getting anything looked at, I got some minor, you know, minor, minor, little, little stuff, not nothing crazy, but I got some things I gotta, you know, get fixed until I, I take my next fight. Well, all the best and thank you. Thanks, Jim. We will take our next set of questions from Ryan McCarthy with low kick MMA. Hey Billy, how's it going, man? Good, Ryan. How are you, bro? I'm good, man. Thanks for giving us some time here. I, I was curious, what um when you look back on I me, mean, it's been about five years since you were on the Ultimate Fighter. When you look back, what are some of the biggest lessons you know you learned while you were there? Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, I, I think I've just grown so much as a as a person and as a fighter. Uh, at the time, you know, I was really bitter and upset that I didn't get into the UFC right away. And but at this point now, I don't really think I was necessarily ready. You know, I was, I was only pro for about five years. And so I think just, just growing as a person, I, I worked a ton of my wrestling. I worked a ton of my strength and conditioning. I knew right from then that my natural weight class would be 145 as opposed to 155. You know, everyone out here is cutting a, a decent amount of weight. So I think the weight class, you know, that decision to go to 45 and to stay at, at featherweight and just growing overall, really improving on my wrestling, really helping out with my fighter IQ, being in that, being in that situation with, with so many champions, you know, Uriah Faber, Cody Garbrandt, Lance Palmer, uh, you know, the list goes on just being around them and, and having that, you know, mindset of, of what it takes to get to that highest level. I think I've grown quite a bit since then. And I think, you know, when I got signed last year, I think it was just perfect timing. And that's why you're able to see me successful now in the UFC is because I'm actually ready now. For sure, man. And then kind of going off that, I mean, you're in a stacked featherweight division. And, you know, you're you're on an eight-fight win streak. You're 4-0 in the UFC. So are there any certain names that, that you'd like to see uh, after this fight? Um, there, there are some that I don't necessarily want to give away right now. You know, I don't want to start calling people out before I get this win. Um, uh, but definitely, I mean, if they have a, if they have a rank number next to them, that's who I'm kind of looking at because I feel like if I'm, if I do go, you know, if I do get this win against Gavin Tucker, who's three and one in the UFC, he's a stud and he's, he's, a, I got a tough task in front of me. If I'm able to get past him, I think we're, I think that would put me right in like, you know, the 20th ranking or even closer. So I definitely think, uh, you know, I, I got into the sport to be a world champion. I just turned 32 the other day. So my, my, you know, all of our, all of our clock is ticking. So I definitely am looking for some big fights there. And there's a lot of matchups that I really like in that, in that top 15. And there's some other big names that I'd really like to fight that I plan on revealing maybe, maybe after this fight. Awesome, man. And then one last thing was, I know you're a big Barstool sports guy uh, mm -hmm. from early days as well. So what's it like uh, for you to get interviews with them? You know, they're a media juggernaut now. So is that is that crazy for you to, to you know, be a part of that? It really is. You know, shout out to Robbie Fox, my guy. Shout out to Al Prez and, and Big Cat and all those guys. I've been, uh, that, that was definitely kind of a surreal moment because uh, I've been following Barstool since about 2010 when they were just a really small company. You know, I would look at their website and, and, you know, kind of interact with those guys on there and to, uh, to now have a couple of interviews and, and me, me and Robbie DM each other all the time, uh, just to be close with those guys. It is kind of surreal. And that was definitely one of my, the biggest media people that I've talked to. And I've done some other really big interviews since then. So this last year has kind of been like a whirlwind and, I don't want it to stop. So I just want to keep going out there and having exciting fights, getting big finishes and, and keep this ball rolling. For sure, man. Well, thanks for giving us your time and uh, best of luck on Saturday. I really look forward to it. All right, Ryan. It. Take care, man. Appreciate it. All right, Billy, that looks like all the questions we had for you, sir. We really appreciate the time. All right. Thank you, guys.